This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Hello divers. Thanks for joining me today. One of the things I frequently tell new divers and sometimes even very experienced divers is not to hold things like lights, compasses, and reels in your hand. If you hold something in your hand, you're eventually going to lose it, so you might as well just throw it away if you hold it in your hand. So what we're going to talk about today is how not to lose it so that you don't lose it too. So if you'd like to uh, not lose your gear, uh, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, one is uh, you can use a lanyard. And uh, here on the left, uh, we have a couple of lanyards. Uh, this is uh, a lanyard uh, that has um, uh, no uh, stretchy bungee. It's actually a uh, nylon cord. And then here's uh, another type of lanyard, uh, very similar, uh, but this one has uh, some elastic uh, uh, bungee to it. And then um, you can actually uh, make a lanyard out of regular bungee. Uh, this is a piece of 3 16th inch bungee. Um, I prefer the thicker bungee uh, just because it gives you a little bit more of a safety margin uh, in regard to these two. Uh, you do have to do some adjustments. Uh, so for example, uh, the uh, readily available bungees have a cord lock, uh, but um, there aren't too many cord locks that are uh, thick enough for this. Uh, so you might have to improvise a cord lock and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so you have uh, the ability to tether equipment to you uh, using um, uh, some kind of uh, tether bungee. On the other hand, uh, you also have the opportunity to use uh, some uh, clips and uh, this, uh, for example, is a standard bolt snap uh, and uh, you can use this to uh, hold things onto a D-ring uh, when you're not using it. And um, for really important items, things that I really don't want to lose, uh, what I actually use instead of a, a bolt snap like that is a trigger snap like this and uh, this particular trigger snap is very reliable it's made by a company called Sea Dog uh, which manufactures or imports the uh, stainless steel trigger snaps from uh, Thailand uh, so whenever I have a very important piece of gear uh, that I do not want to lose I'll use a, a trigger snap so the idea behind keeping your gear uh, is actually to use a combination of a lanyard and a bolt snap so what you can do uh, when you have your gear attached to a ding ring with a bolt snap, you can actually put your hand uh, through the lanyard before you remove the bolt snap. And so that way, uh, if you happen to drop it in that process after you undo the, uh, uh, open up the bolt snap uh, or the trigger snap, then uh, because the piece of gear uh, is uh, lanyard to you, you can't lose it. Similarly, uh, when you're trying to attach uh, and stow your gear uh, to a D ring, if you have the lanyard around your wrist, you can actually take it and put it around the D-ring with the bolt snap or the trigger snap. Uh, and then once it's attached to the D-ring, you can take your hand out of the, um, you can take your hand out of the lanyard. So that's one of the reasons why I prefer the, um, uh, the bungee, these types of bungees uh, versus the solid one, is it gives you a little bit more flexibility in stretching and putting your wrist in and out uh, when you're trying to do this. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we will talk about using the uh, tether or bungee uh, in conjunction with a bolt snap or a trigger snap. That'll be next. In this video clip, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate how I use the uh, bungee lanyard uh, and the bolt snap uh, to secure my uh, dive light. And uh, one of the things about uh, doing this uh, is that the mounting points on every single item that you use uh, is going to be different. So um, I'm going to do this flashlight and then uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a reel just to demonstrate how I do it because they have different attachment uh, type points. Uh, so um, one of the things about doing this uh, is uh, when we uh, attach this, um, uh, if you're using thicker bungee and the hole is smaller, uh, it can be sometimes a little bit aggravating to uh, to get the uh, to get the cord in there. So hopefully, hopefully that will not take me too long to do here. Uh, that side went in kind of easily. Okay, so I'm going to pull that through, and uh, I'm going to attempt to squish it through again uh, on this side. This may get a little bit out of focus when I do this. It's 
fighting me a little bit right now at this point. Uh, there we go. That went a lot better than I thought it would. All right, so um, then obviously what we're going to do is uh, take this and uh, uh, and make it uh, make it even. Now, at this point, there's several different ways that you could do this, so uh, whichever way works best for you. Uh, what I like to do is I like to take uh, the snap and uh, put it through here and then make a knot uh, with the snap um, uh, going through the part of the knot. So what that does is it prevents the, um, it prevents the snap from moving around. Uh, and uh, when I do this, what I'm going to attempt to do is to keep the bungee parallel. I haven't uh, conducted a formal test on this, but uh, what I have heard is if you keep your uh, if you keep your bungee parallel to each other, then that has a tendency to uh, uh, to uh, have it uh, the possibility of it becoming loose uh, less. All right, so I'm going to torque that down. Okay. All right. So the position of my bolt snap is relatively fixed uh, to the area here. And then um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another overhand knot. Uh, and again, I'm going to try to keep it parallel uh, as I put my bungee through. And again, I'm going to try to make this uh, very tight. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to uh, have it get lost uh, or unravel. Now, at this point, um, we could cut this off and make this even. And uh, the idea is you don't want this to come apart, so uh, you can uh, take some cord and uh, whip it, or uh, you can actually take a wire tie and whip that as well. And for uh, the slider, you could do the same thing. Uh, you can put a um, wire tie through here, uh, or you can whip it. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to whip it uh, in the next little video clip, so uh, we could just talk about doing that. Now, one of the things about this that I really like uh, is uh, when I'm actually using the light. Okay, whether I'm holding it like that or I'm holding it like that, uh, is that if I need to do something, uh, I can just let the light hang uh, from my wrist this way, and it goes directly down, uh, so it doesn't blind anybody. Okay, so that's what I'll do with that. And then if I'm going to clip it off, I've got my hand through the lanyard. Uh, I could just take the bolt snap, or the trigger snap in this case, clip it on the D-ring, and then remove my hand. Similarly, if it's already uh, attached to a uh, D-ring, I can put my hand through the lanyard, and then I can undo the trigger snap or the bolt snap, and my light is secure. So this will prevent me from losing my light, a uh, very expensive piece of equipment that I would prefer not to lose. All right, so in the next clip, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly uh, illustrate uh, making an um, uh, improvised uh, uh, adjuster uh, cord lock uh, with a piece of cordage. So I have a uh, small piece of cordage here, uh, about uh, 15 inches long, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an improvised uh, cord lock. Uh, so I'm going to uh, bend this up here like that on itself, and then I'm going to uh, wrap the uh, cordage around uh, the section that I want to uh, have uh, uh, controlled by the, uh, the cord block. And I'm going to wrap this around a few times. Uh, I don't think uh, necessary to, uh, to do it more than maybe three or four times. And I'm going to uh, stick uh, this through the, uh, the loop on the end here. And then uh, I'm going to pull it tight on both sides. And uh, you see people using this type of, uh, type of knot in a variety of applications. Uh, and so we're just gonna be using it as a cord lock here. I'm gonna cut off the ends, of maybe a quarter inch uh, to a half inch uh, back. And the idea behind that is um, we're going to uh, want to have a little bit of cordage uh, so we can melt it uh, on here. Uh, like that. That way it won't, uh, there'll be very little chance that this thing can come undone by itself. 
Okay, it melts very well. All right, so um, this is my uh, improvised uh, uh, cord lock, and so I can stretch it and put it in position, and if you make this tight enough, then uh, it will uh, uh, stay in position, and you can put your hand through there and uh, adjust it as however you need uh, in order to use it. So I could do the same thing uh, on the end here, uh, exact same procedure on the end here, uh, or um, uh, I could also use a wire tie here and here, uh, depending upon um, if I have cordage or not, or if I have uh, if I have a uh, if I have a wire tie, depending upon what I wanted to do. Okay, so that's the cord lock. All right, so let's go on to uh, another uh, item that uh, I would like to uh, uh, put a uh, lanyard and uh, a snap on, and that's going to be a reel. What we're going to do next uh, is a reel, and uh, again, uh, depending upon what you're using, whether it's a light or a reel or a camera or a compass, uh, the mounting might be a little bit different. Uh, so uh, this is an older Mantha reel. I don't know if they're actually still made or not, uh, but that's what we're going to use. Okay, so the uh, Mantha reel has uh, a little piece of um, bent metal here. Uh, that you can use as your uh, as your tie point, and so uh, what we're going to do is just put the bungee through there. Uh, and by the way, uh, one of the advantages of using the bungee like this is that uh, uh, it adheres to the um, no metal to metal contact. So, uh, in the odd event that you uh, your bolt snap uh, or your trigger snap did fail, then uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, cut the uh, bungee with your line cutter without too much uh, difficulty. So uh, we're going to take this um, and do the, basically the same thing. Uh, stick it down here and uh, we're going to again uh, make, a, uh, make a knot through here. And I will, as before, attempt to uh, keep the, uh, the bungee parallel. Uh, to each other and uh, having uh, a little overhand thing going on here right now okay and we're gonna make that uh, uh, tight again and um, I didn't mention this before but one of the advantages of uh, tying um, the bolt snap uh, here uh, versus to uh, further down uh, on the end here is that uh, there's less swing uh, so that uh, your uh, Item, whatever you have, uh, it's not going to uh, is not going to pivot around as much. Okay, so we have that, and um, then uh, we're going to uh, uh, do another situation here uh, where we're going to uh, tie another overhand knot on the end, and of course uh, there are different ways that you could do this depending upon uh, what your what your preference is, you could uh, lock it different ways, but uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do for today, is I'm going to lock it this way. And I uh, want to make sure that I do my best to, uh, to make this even. And again, it's very important to stretch this tightly. So when you do this, uh, it won't come apart. Okay, so I again have my uh, section here that I'm going to uh, make tight. And then I'm going to uh, make this a little shorter perhaps and uh, burn the bungee. And then I'm going to take my uh, two parts. This time I'll do both parts just so everybody can see the complete uh, thing. And again, uh, if you so desired, uh, you could use a field expedient wire tie to do this. And some people may prefer to do that anyway, but uh, that's entirely up to you uh, which one you want to do. And uh, again, we want to keep this. Uh, we want to keep this tight. Here's my uh, little slider thing, okay. And the fact that the bungee does uh, does uh, flex a little bit makes this uh, pretty effective uh, in terms of being a slider. Keeps a lot of uh, a lot of tension on it. Okay, so same thing as before. I'm just gonna burn 
uh, quarter inch to half inch on this and stick it down on there so it doesn't uh, unravel. Okay, so that's my slider. And uh, may not have made my knot entirely even here. I think I can adjust it through that point. And then I'm going to do the other end here. And again, use use a wire tie if you want to for this part. That's just the safety. Peace of mind. You should always check your gear before you use it to make sure nothing has happened to it in the meantime. I once had a guy that was taking a rescue class and he last time he used his gear was on a trip and he pulled his gear out of his bag just when he was going to take the rescue class and he found out that the airline three months ago it actually destroyed his regulator set so that was uh, that was not good actually I think it was his um, his inflator that they destroyed okay so uh, again we have the bungee here and uh, this uh, is used to uh, secure onto your d-ring and then this is for your hand your wrist and um, you can uh, clip on your uh, reel onto your D-ring and make sure it's on there before you uh, let go of it. And if it does fall, you have your lanyard here. And then similarly, if this is already clipped, you put your hand through there and then uh, unclip, the, um, unclip the bolt snap. Uh, and then um, it's going to be around your wrist. So very little, chance of, uh, very little chance of losing it. If you have both a bolt snap and a... Uh, tether uh, on your uh, pieces of equipment. Okay, so uh, again, I could use this on a camera. I could use it on a compass. Uh, I will tell you a quick story that I thought was kind of amusing. I was teaching an advanced class, um, a navigation dive, and um, I had uh, a lanyard like this on our compass board. I think there's a previous video on that. And during the compass course, the student actually lost the compass. Okay, so I'm not really sure how you lose your compass while you're on a compass course, uh, but apparently he did. And what he did not do was he did not have uh, his wrist around the compass board uh, when he was doing the navigation. And so because he didn't have it around his wrist, uh, he was probably distracted by something and ended up, um, ending up dropping it. And finishing the compass course somehow without his uh, actual compass. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. If you'd like to keep your gear, uh, if you don't want to lose your gear, uh, uh, so you don't lose it, uh, make sure that you have a um, some kind of snap, trigger snap for important things, because uh, it's less likely to uh, release on its own accidentally, and also a wrist lanyard. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the odd event that you deploy something like a DSMB on the end of your reel and uh, a vessel happens to uh, catch it in its prop, uh, the use of the bungee lanyard uh, is also much safer than perhaps than clipping it off to your gear. Uh, if this does happen, what will occur is the bungee will stretch and pop off your wrist. So it is much safer than other alternatives uh, if you want to secure your DSMB and your reel. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.